Hello and welcome. My name is Neil Aus and this is episode 14 of our C-Block tutorial campaign. Let's have a look at what I have built last uh, stream. So this is a more of a summary session where we'll be walking through what I've built in the previous sessions. Now, what is really interesting about this last streaming session, it was about four hours long and there are two things that I did not spend time on. Firstly, I did not spend a second thought. Uh, second thinking or working on the power. It has re remained completely stable all through this. So that's one thing that meant power was not an issue, a very big C block topic that just wasn't an issue. It's even to the point where I, if I can find it, I have stockpiled 500 solar panels that I just haven't bothered to put in because why should I? The other one thing that I have not bothered with is actually raw materials. The whole thing is running. I don't think this is all running. It's producing what I need. Everything goes in here. Yes, it's not producing in crazy numbers, but it, I mean, as long as I retain 10,000 of everything, then there is really no issue. There's no issue. There's no problem. And I can just proceed. So instead of that, I've been focusing on really checking. The whole session was completely narrow-minded, focused on one thing and one thing only. So let's walk over there and have a look at the beauty that it is. Here it is. Electronic circuit boards. If you know anything, if you know anything about uh, Angel's mods, then this is a major milestone. The second you have electronic circuit boards, things just start going your way. You could start taking up. There are so many things that are locked behind the electronic circuit boards. It's actually the same with the basic electronic boards, but they are, of course, much easier. This is the next tier up. But after that, the tiers do not scale up as fast. They don't get that much more difficult. So let's have a look at what it actually meant to be focusing on this topic. Well, they require certain complicated things. So let's start from, let's start with the transistors. The transistors require plastic bars. We did that in a previous episode, so I'll not go through it. But it also requires silicon wafer. Let's go through the silicon wafer. Oh, one thing that's important to note is this part here. I have been, I've decided, even though I only have these really slow angels bots, they are, I should mention, they are for some reason not part of the C block mod. I think that's just because uh, it's actually built with old, uh, old mods because it is part of the angels mods. And I think when you play angels mods, you play angels mods. You don't play a, a small selection of it. So therefore, I want this. I think it fits really well into the theme of it, of Angel's Mods, and I really like it. So you can say that this is a, a differing from the standard mod pack, the mod pack, but I, I really want to see that it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, this is a more of a stylistic point. Basically, the reason why I'm building it this exact setup, let's just take one as an example. You can see these two are the same angle here, here. These are also... They are all capped on enabled to the logistics network. They're generally speaking, they're all capped at 1000 products and all the requests are generally 500. Each of these are carrying 50 or are carrying a stack of 200 usually. And so 500 is good because that means it takes three going here. And these robots are excruciatingly slow as you can see. But that's really not a problem in, in a C block setting because things are moving so slow anyway. So while building and designing, it's okay to let just the robots catch up. And you can see they are getting stuff done. I mean, this one is only 10, 10 uh, barrels. Yes, that's a difficult word, 10 barrels. But nonetheless, it is actually, it's moving. So this setup will scale really fast. I can upgrade the inserter to be faster. I can upgrade these to be go all the way up. I can at some point in here, this location, put in, um, what's it called? It's called a beacon and that will surely cover everything. So this setup is pretty robust toward the end games. And you can see how this one kicked into action. The reason why it kicked into action is because there must have been someone who picked up some things here, right? This is now, why is it producing at 1.2? Oh, it drews a 1.2 because it's already, it has been marked as pickup and then it deducts it already. And that's why it starts producing towards the future demand. That's actually really nice. And you can see these are working. They're easy to set up. They're easy to stamp down. 
Uh, I use the small, the small ones when possible. They also work really well. And that gives us the ECBs. So let's look at the transistors. Transistors are up here. Is one of those that I might need to scale up. They're also doing fine. They need silicon wafers. The rest is being flown in. Silicon wafers are coming here. They need silicon plates. Silicon plates are being produced. Hey, let's use the car because the base is so big that we really need a car at this point. I built two locations down here. One is the silicon. I'm not getting much silicon and you can see what a puny little residual I'm getting. What is it actually I'm getting it from? I'm getting it from this one. This one is producing it. This is just taking bubmonium and converting it. So the, that produces four materials. Let's actually open it up so we can see four materials. One bob, one slag. The slag gets put in here, crushed, and into the landfill. Two tin. That's all the tin production we have. And then one, one silicon. It's not very much silicon, and it might become a problem. It goes in here. It goes into this box. I have 1.8. That's pretty nice, actually. And what I also have is the next one here. This is producing. You can see. Very nice. It's producing solder. And I'm actually up to 1,000 1, of those. I'm uncapping this one because, yeah, I don't know why, but I am currently uncapping it. Hey, there I am. I'm uncapping it, and it this one will pick it up. You can see slowly, slowly, slowly. And here, that's being tin and lead. It's going to this process. Oh, I might as well jump out of this one. Because in here, Bruce is quite a lot of solder, and that gives here and there we go this one has picked up 200 solder and it will move up not lose my car i was okay so that's silicon into silicon wafer into transistors that's one item the next item is the basic electronic components we have that the solder we just saw it the circuit board circuit boards are where are they oh they're up here reason why they're up here is because they require ferric chloride of, uh, what is it called? Ferric chloride solution. So that's already one of those things. These guys require phenolic boards and ferric chloride. Those are the difficult ones. Let's look at the ferric chloride. Some time ago, I did scale up my hydrogen chloride solution for exactly this purpose. So I could produce it. It goes into 500 canisters. Canisters are produced with... Plastic, so that's also a bit annoying. And and then it goes pumps also pumps it in here because why bury it in containers when I can just pump it in here? But it's still nice to have it in containers when someone else needs it somewhere. And the other thing is the phenolic boards. Phenolic boards are down here. They are actually the worst part of it. Because phenolic boards require wood. That's not so bad that we can make wood from here. Wood can be made, usually you just make it from raw wood but I can't so instead I have to make it from cellulose paste and cellulose fiber and cellulose paste is then made here with sodium hydroxide so I've also had to produce sodium hydroxide this is again produced the same place as I'm producing hydrogen chloride down here there is a production here as well it's also being used for the aluminium so that's being useful anyway and additionally I am producing 500 barrels of hydrogen chloride no problem at all there so that gets us there but then we get to the worst one the resin but let's say when we have the resin we have these phenolic boards we have the, the electronic the circuit boards and then we go over here and then we get this so the whole thing is locked behind resin and resin is by far the worst component because resin can be is always produced or oh, this is the normal way so you're not used to resin being difficult. It's created from raw wood, but as you know, on C-Block, there isn't a lot of raw wood. So we have to do a different process, and that's a really cumbersome process. Of course, it comes from the liquid, but that requires urea gas and formaldehyde. And that means, welcome to met petrochemicals. So now I have to do the petrochemicals. Petrochemicals, or at least the chemical part of it, not the petrochemicals, but like the chemical part of the process. So yeah, I mean, I mean, urea gas, I need urea gas and formaldehyde. Let's see what this one is the process. It's quite 
it's it's really compressed. It took a while to design, but I actually like it. This is a nice little block. If I need bigger, I can scale it up or I can increase these. Basically, this one is saying, give me all the urea, give me all the formaldehyde, mix it together, you get resin. Awesome. That's pretty neat. And you can also see here, it is stacked up. That one requester and that one requester, they're stacked up. So I just need to figure out how to get urea, how to get formaldehyde. This one is the process of making formaldehyde. Comes from methanol gas. The methanol gas, we create that from here. So what I just did was basically take my plastic production, which is not doing very well, I can see. Wow, that's interesting. Why is my plastic production doing so badly? That's, oh, right, I know, I know, I know, I know. That's because, oh, I'm using too much here. That's interesting because that's, that's kind of a known thing. I really know what I should do here. I should be saying. Be saying these ones are only allowed to take when wood pellets. Oops, that's not wood pellets. Wood pellets are greater than not greater than zero, but greater than two hundred. Copy, paste. So this one will only the re because the reason I have to do it this way is because I want or need to make sure that this is keep producing. Because if this one stops, then yeah, all hell breaks loose, and that will only fill up once. Once this belt is then jammed, or if it comes in faster, they can unload, which is not likely, especially because some people are coming in to steal this. Why are they coming in to steal this? I wonder who is actually requiring raw wood. Oh, that might, that's actually here. I uh, will get to that a bit later. Okay, anyway, we are producing methanol gas. It's actually enough methanol. No, it's not enough methanol. So that is not really stable. This one is unfortunately the problem. This is where it, it gets stolen because for the urea gas, it comes from ammonia plus carbon dioxide producing. Did I put it into a request a provider just like this? That is crazy. I am insane. You should stop this one immediately and only do it once barrels of, what is this? Bills of urea. Less than 100. I wonder how much is actually in our network. Let's check. Urea. Ah, 347. That's the reason. Because I've just been consuming way too much. Now this one will actually stop. I'll just do it this way so it'll stop faster. Good. All right. So that's the reason I was just being completely stupid on this. All right, so what I do have is actually here. In order, this one, urea gas requires ammonia. There are two ways to get to ammonia. Ammonia. The one that I really wanted to do was this ammonia gas from from uh, uh, from algae production. However, it's not really efficient. It's 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 just not good. Thirty seconds to produce one hundred. The alternative is this one. That's two seconds to produce 100, and it just requires metal catalyst and hydrogen nitrogen. Nitrogen literally comes out of the air. Hydrogen comes from it as a byproduct from the hydrogen chloride production. Up here, we are extracting, extracting, uh, yeah, okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> extracting out of the air. Good, what's the, oh yeah, so this is stuck. Right, so we are just getting a nice big fat stockpile of Oxygen when we need it and also nitrogen. That's pretty good. Okay, now that so that means nitrogen, nitrogen and hydrogen get becomes an ammonia. Ammonia becomes urea. Methanol becomes formaldehyde and urea and methanol becomes resin that goes into going becoming phenolic boards, circuit boards, electronic circuit boards. And then I was so happy because I had my electronic circuit boards. They are used for a lot of things, but the one thing that it's mainly used for is or the first thing I want to use it for is better robots. But they require electronic engine units. So this is my next big project that is working towards this one. It's mineral oil because that's needed for lubricant, that's needed for electronic uh, electric engines. And once I have that, then I can start making better better 
robots and the better robots will then enable me to start scaling up faster. I am not in any kind of rush to get blue science. Well, you know, it would be nice to get blue circuits and all, but I don't technically strain for it. What I will be working on in the next series or the next episode is first of all, the electronic circuits, then making some better robots. It shouldn't take long. And then I'll be scaling up more of the production of random stuff. Like I don't want to pre produce uh, insert us these. I, I want these uh, produced somewhere. Now the next part aside from this is actually on the inbound logistics side. I really need this one. This is working fine for now, but as I start scaling up with a high, with a faster robot, uh, robot factory, I definitely need to scale this up. This is just not sustainable. It, uh, it, it's quite clear that I can't just keep extending this one further out. I need to do something else. And that's probably going to require a massive amount of landfill. This one is a pretty good setup. I don't think it continues to scale. Uh, technically, I should only have six because that's all that can be handled here. And what I'm doing now is just make putting it into these boxes and that works absolutely brilliant. Fine. We're going to wrap this one up. I think this uh, is a major progress. We now have electronic circuit boards. That is such a milestone in terms of, of angels, uh, angels bots or angels, uh, angels mods. Yes, because then we can start working on a lot of different things. It also means a lot of my machines can be scaled up. You can see here, this requires three electronic circuit boards. So now we can get faster machines and these ones are also faster machines. And you know, things will just start picking up from here. Anyway, hope you're enjoying it. I hope you'll be checking back to my next live stream where we'll be proceeding to scale up the base. And until then, thank you for joining. Thank you for your interest. Be sure to leave a like, a comment, and then uh, I'll be seeing you next time. Cheers.